Time to fire up the VCR. This one's my favorite. Welcome to Analog Jones in the Temple of Film. I'm Steve. And I am Matt. <laughs> we are a VHS podcast that breaks down the box art, trailers, and behind the scenes, and then we try to stick something in the museum. Matt, what are the movies we doing this week? All right. So every once in a while, we like to get a little fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this uh, week, we decided to get super weird for Easter and April Fool's Day, which is the same day. And it turns out we are the fools because we watched The Littlest Angels Easter and J.J. the Jet Plane Never Give Up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to break down the box art to give Matt a little bit of break this week. <laughs> oh, you're still making me break down the box of the other one. <laughs> so we're starting with uh, Littlest uh, Angels Easter. So this was put out by Family Home Entertainment. And I actually remember them quite a bit. I believe they did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle VHSs. Yeah, I think they had their names on those for a while. They just cranked out a ton of these animated kids, family things. They weren't all Christian. It wasn't like that wasn't always their bend. Uh, oh, this was Christian? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> they, uh, some of them were. Like the when we get to the trailers, that's sort of all of the things that were advertised on here. Yeah, some of them were just regular animated, not religious, but they were they were around for a while. They were tied to Artisan. And Artisan is now Lionsgate. Oh, that ties into our last week. Yeah, it does. So this at the front has our littlest angel with his gleaming background of heaven and he's got his entire basket of easter eggs here so colorful so full of life <laughs> also what's littlest angel's name in this uh, movie no fucking clue littlest angel is oh. his name <laughs> like they don't even name this poor kid <laughs> i was worried i was like oh man i didn't know he had a name <laughs> he doesn't no one cared to give him one <laughs> The spine on this has nothing really exciting. It just says the title. It, it lets you know that it, this is a VHS. I don't know if you knew that, Matt. Yeah. And a hi-fi stereo. Oh, good. Actually, the quality on the tape was pretty good. Oh, yeah, it was really good. They, it seemed like they used a lot of tape for a short program, so it looked pretty good. I guess we should also say this is a clamshell, but it's not like a Disney clamshell. It's the hard plastic clamshell. Yeah, it is like the clamshell. You could throw this thing against a wall, which uh, we almost did, I think, after it was <laughs> over, uh, and it would withstand it. It's the hard, hard clamshell. So we go into the back here. We have some stills of the, I don't know, teacher angel, the kind yeah. of like Samuel L. Jackson angel. The gatekeeper. Bookkeeper. Angel who uh, gives the littlest angel his um, first assignment. Then we have 90s kid and his dog hugging. And let me tell you, this kid is freaking 90s. Yeah. Like a streak in his hair and he has the butt cut. Yeah. Like parted right in the middle. Yeah. 1998 is when this came out and this kid looks it. <laughs> then they make sure to stick the picture of Naomi Judd, which has a special appearance as the understanding angel. But I love how they don't put her animated character. It's her actual face. Yeah, it's like they didn't finish her character or something yet. And they were like, uh, just stick her face on there. We got her We got her three lines that she recorded. So we know she's in it. Yeah. <laughs> That'll sell to someone. Yeah, right? Somebody's like, ooh, Naomi Judd. <laughs> and then we have like a background image right here of this shitty Reagan family, I would yes, call this. Yes, the proto, like, typical conservative church-going Reaganite family with their little shit son and the blonde bimbo kind of an asshole mom that I found pretty sexy, though. <laughs> I think it's interesting. I'm personally not ripping that they're a conservative family. I'm ripping on them being such an ass to the dog. I think that's what it is, though. I think these, you know, typical Reaganite conservative families are just in their own little bubble that, like, they just shit on everything else that... And, and things they don't understand and things that... Outside forces. So this dog is not their dog. 
that they shit all over in the movie. So, they, you know, because it's unknown. It's not That's a, all it is. It's an unknown. She keeps calling it dirty and yeah. ugly. Yeah. Just mean, downright mean. And, and it's I think an that's... adorable dog. Nothing's ugly about yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. Anyway, I'll read the synopsis to this. <laughs> Sometimes, when you least expect it, things can change for the better. That's what Easter's all about. New beginnings. But for Ryan Newman, moving to a small town from the big city seems like a change for the worse until he meets the littlest angel. Ryan's having a tough time making friends. The littlest angel is eager to help. But this is his very first earthly assignment. And he has almost as much to learn as Ryan. Fortunately, with faith, hope, understanding, and a little lovable mutt named Sonny, both Ryan and the Littlest Angel discover that miracles can happen when you open your heart. Celebrate the joy of Easter with this delightful animated tale that's sure to please young and old alike. Family Home Entertainment presents beloved Easter classics the entire family will enjoy. Yippee! These videos make great gifts and are priced at just $12.98 each. What kind of an angel are you? Introducing our premiere release of a new animated tale that's destined to become a classic. I've got it! The Littlest Angel Easter is voiced by Naomi Judd and is based on the wonderful children's book, The Littlest Angel, that has enchanted people everywhere. See ya! First of all, there's barely any Easter in this. No, it is about a kid finding a stray dog, needing an angel to have his parents say it's okay to keep the dog. That's basically the plot of this movie. Yeah, I, I kind of hate this movie. <laughs> like, the whole time they were being so mean to the dog until, like, the last two minutes, and it's only when the dog... Wait, the dog doesn't even save the kid. Why did they suddenly just switch? They're like, oh, no, if we don't let our kid have Sonny, he's going to... He's going to keep falling in wells? I mean... <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it was because after he fell in a well, they, when they rescued him with the help of the angel and the word of God. They rescued him and they were talking to him and they found out then how much Sonny the dog means to him. So then they were like, okay, now that we know it means a lot to you, I guess we can keep him. I don't know. It's so fucked up. It's so weird. Cause like he expresses that he wants to help this dog pretty early on in the movie and they're just immediately like no the thing's filthy no we got to get rid of it it belongs homeless it was homeless and it should stay homeless and it's like whoa calm down nancy reagan <laughs> well yeah why did they make the mom so mean because the dad just kind of was very quiet in the background yeah like the dad has no opinion she's just got him so whipped that he like doesn't say anything ever all the time <laughs> let's just describe this kid this kid is 90s cool kid to the max. Like I said before, he has the butt cut with the split in the middle, the shaved underneath with the streak, but he's also got like the baggy jeans. He has, I don't know, the button up shirt that's not buttoned up. And the the oversized, up. Yeah. yeah, the oversized button down shirt with the white t-shirt underneath. And then the red converses too, just to like send it home as like the 90s cool kid. Who also though, probably because of his upbringing with shitty parents, is such a shit. Like he's such a shit kid. The whole family's shitty, ex well, except the dad who barely says anything. Right. His complacency is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, we, the first thing we see is the kid going to school, and the kids are like, hey, you want to play baseball with us? And he's like, I fucking hate baseball. <laughs> baseball sucks. Only stupid kids play baseball. And I'm like, whoa, kid. <laughs> this, is, this is why you don't have any friends. You're a fucking sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> and then the angels give this kid... This little, bra it kind of seems like he was a bratty little angel, mostly because, you know, he couldn't sit still. So I'm assuming this angel has ADD. <laughs> yeah. And Can't also, know. like, it's the only, like, angel that's a little kid. But, like, you got to think about it. That's a dead kid. You start your movie. Your movie is centered around a dead kid <laughs> helping a sociopath find love in a dog. <laughs> that is what this movie's about. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> <laughs> so we sent down there, and I was a little irritated. I go, wait, you're just sending this kid straight down? 
you know, he's not going to, like, shadow someone for a while. What if he fucks this kid over? <laughs> yeah, which he, like, constantly does. Like, the reason the parents scream about the dog and tell him to get get rid of it is because the dog ruins the house. But the dog only ruins the house because it gets spooked by something that the angel does. Yeah, this angel is actually more of a problem than a help at all. He doesn't shadow anybody. They're just like, we got to give him a chance. We got to send him down to help also why are they helping this kid why in in this heavenscape that they've created in this movie are they looking down on this little piece of shit and they're like he just needs a friend like (laughs) hey angel that's not really good at doing anything up here why don't you go down there and help him make a friend yeah why don't they send this little white angel kid down to the ghetto to, like, help those kids. Like, yeah. Hey, don't do crack. Yeah, no. Instead, they're going to send him to suburb Nancy Reagan suburbia to help one little spoiled white kid whose psychopath mom has turned him into a sociopath. <laughs> Everyone should watch this. It's amazing. <laughs> Actually, I looked down at the time of this, and it was 26-minute runtime. 15 minutes in, I wrote... Man, I hope this family's house burns down because they suck. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad. Like, I didn't know. I was like, how are you guys going to redeem this? And personally, they kind of don't. The priest steps in. I don't know. He, fall, he falls down a well. They find the dog. They find the kid. And everything's fine. And I was like, well, thank God it's over. Yeah. God answered our thoughts and prayers as we were watching this one. <laughs> so one of the things I do want to talk about maybe before we sort of like try to straighten out the plot here. Is, oh, are we going to do that? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to try. The priest. <laughs> Let's talk about this fucking creep for a minute here. He shows up. The first thing we see is basically the mom is just sucking his ass when he shows up at the house. And he's like, I think we should have the Easter egg hunt here. And she's like, really? You do it at my house in my garden? It's nothing special. I think they just came from fucking because the dad's never around. So <laughs> yeah, I guess he's at work. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that, that deal is. Yeah, the the priest is just like, being a little weird about that. And then the next time that he runs, that the that Ryan runs into the priest here, Ryan is the kid, the sociopath. He runs into the priest is when he's chasing after the dog, you know, after their, one of their first times hanging out, the, him and the dog. Uh, they run, runs past the priest, and the priest is just, like, very creepily putting cans of food in a food bank, which isn't weird for religious charities to be doing that, but his food bank is in, like, a cellar creepy basement. And I was just waiting for him to, like, ask Ryan to come help him put some cans away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the animators were like, oh, let's, can we stay away from this? <laughs> I wanna, mm. Yeah, like, in, in this creepy basement, too, where he's putting these cans uh, around the side of the church or whatever, and it's, like, an old wooden sign that he like carved into like food bank. He might as well have like called it like rape den because like it is scary and sketchy looking. <laughs> well, then what's even creepier about it is at the end of the tape, the dog was trapped in the cellar the whole time. And yeah. I was like, why? <laughs> like I was waiting for the priest to come out because they discover it, that he's in there during a mass. I was waiting for the priest to come out and be like, Oh, there he is. <laughs> like, this priest locked this dog in this rape cellar. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go with the positive look out here and, and say he was just going to eat him. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, was the, that was the hopeful out for this dog in that priest's cellar. <laughs> Let's check out the trailers that happened in this film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. We didn't even talk about that yet. <laughs> so Artisan shows off their whole Jesus tape lineup. Which yes. has a bunch of other little cartoons like this right here that were for fourteen ninety five a piece, but then it gets into some other you know weird ones where they're like heroes of the Bible, which I think were nine ninety five yeah. a piece. But my favorite one, our favorite one, yeah, was the Jesus of Nazareth tape, which cost a whopping forty nine. Make Easter even more special with an assortment of live-action Bible classics, including Jesus of Nazareth, priced at forty nine ninety eight. How does that happen? What? Yeah, it's insane. Who was buying this? We looked it up as well, too. To get the artisan, unedited, two-disc DVD of this thing, it's still $45 used on Amazon. They even have a tape of the Jesus of Nazareth. 
that we were talking about those, they're still selling it for $16 for a tape. Yeah, we need to start making Christ films. And obviously they're not hard to do because <laughs> both of these things we watched were incredibly low budget and not very well made. So like, we could do this. <laughs> I think we can make some money at it. <laughs> Welcome to Analog Jones and Talking About God! <laughs> yeah, right? Let's sell out for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Move was that, on? Was that the only trailers we had? That's on it, yeah. Yeah, let's get into this thing. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about what maybe the plot of this movie is. We have a kid who moves from the big city to a small town with his family, and he's worried about making friends because apparently he's an asshole. And we find out he is an asshole because when friends come up to him, he's just a dick to him. Yeah, he's a sociopath. They're like, hey, you want to play baseball with us? No, I hate baseball. Fuck you guys. I hate you. And I don't want to hang out with you at all. Then we're introduced to the little angel in heaven who is, I don't know, what are they having? Like a gospel singing? Yeah, they're like singing and then he's like disrupting it because he's the littlest angel because he's the only dead kid up there, I guess. And we have the kind of like the nasally jerk angel who's yeah. like, I knew he'd be a problem. Yeah, there's asshole angels in this. <laughs> like, <laughs> really weird. Yeah, they decide the gatekeeper guy or the bookkeeper, Samuel L. Jackson type part, is decides to send the kid down. Or is it Morgan Freeman? Maybe it's Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman always plays God, so probably. Morgan Freeman decides to send down the little angel to help Ryan make a friend. That's like the goal. So this little white kid from the suburbs is going to get a friend. In doing so, he tries to basically hook Ryan up with the stray dog so that they can become friends. The littlest angel basically acts like Casper the ghost. Everyone's okay with the fact that there's like ghosts. They can't see him as an angel, but they're like fine with like flying objects. Like at one point when he, the littlest angel tries to talk to Ryan, he puts on clothes so that the clothes can float and then Ryan can see it. The other kids also see the flying clothes and everybody's just like, oh man, Ryan, he's so weird. And it's like, that was a ghost, guys. <laughs> like Everyone in this town, it happens multiple times, everyone in this town is fine with ghosts. Yeah, apparently no one told this littlest angel, don't play so hard and loose with the rules here. Uh... <laughs> We don't want everyone to be freaked out by these ghosts, but maybe they just didn't need to say anything because this is the only town in America that's just like, Haha, look at that. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, back, carry on to my day here. So then uh, he, he wants to friend the dog. He tries to keep him under his porch. The littlest angel kind of sabotages him on accident by throwing out the frisbee so the dog runs out into the yard and then just destroys the garden. Priest wants to use that garden for the Easter egg hunt. And, of course, the dog destroys it, sends Nancy Reagan mom into a fit of rage, says all these awful things about this dog. And then it's just like, Ryan, get in your room, clean yourself off, and just forget about it. Very hardcore. That dog's going to continue to be homeless. I hope it lives in the woods and gets eaten by a bear. Basically is what she says, yes. <laughs> the kid ends up going and looking for the dog right and he can't find him right when he goes to look for him i think after that is when they go when he falls in the well right when he goes to look for him yeah he's looking for him in the woods and falls in the well and then the angel tries to help him which we should also point out somehow the kid starts to be able to see the littlest angel after the dog is gone and he's sad he's been quote unquote air quotes humbled so now he can see the angel because he's humble now. To which we know he's humble by him basically like saying, I'm so humble right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a kid's movie. You gotta spell it out. <laughs> Sounds like Trump. <laughs> I'm the most humble. <laughs> now I can see angels. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably already in one of his speeches. <laughs> so the kid's trapped in the well. The angel tries to help. It doesn't work. He flies back to the house and somehow leads the parents to he, them. He makes the frisbee from the dog that they're, that the kid is sad about because they were playing frisbee together when they were friends. The littlest angel leads the frisbee out, you know, ghost leads it outside the house. 
And the parents follow the frisbee. And they're like, it's a sign. It's a sign from God. And they run out and they find him in the well. Then they keep the dog. Yeah, and, they rescue him. Yeah. And they rescue the kid. And they're like, I didn't know how much Sonny meant to you. I guess we can keep him. And then they can't find him again until we, like I mentioned earlier, find out that he's been locked in the priest's creepy basement. And the priest is just like, oh, there he is. And then, like, they get to be a happy family again. And the littlest angel goes back up to heaven. Asshole angel is like, no, nah, you did pretty good. It lets us know at the very end, too. We can go to artisan.com to find more videos. So I'm like, yeah, they're pushing it. Yeah, they're they're really pushing. I bet this sold pretty well. There's no information about this movie if you look it up right now. But I bet this did okay at the time. I think it's actually on YouTube as well, so any of you can watch it because none of you are going to buy this VHS. <laughs> but if you're curious enough about just how fucking warped it is, check it out on YouTube. <laughs> One last note on this, and then we'll move on to JJ the Jet Plane. Do we have? to <laughs> unfortunately naomi judd's character it's the character that stands out the most because it is really robotic a lot of these characters are actually really animated well very fluid they have a lot of life it's good especially up in the heaven scenes they worked hard on that because those angels have a lot of character to them with the little bitty secondary animations and everything but her character of the understanding angel yuck it's like they added it in. They got she she really does only have like three lines in the whole movie. It's like they got her later and then added it in or something. Like that's what it, it seems like. Did she really sell to the Christian community that well? Yeah, I don't know. I would have to time travel back to 1998 to try to figure out why she is in this. Yeah, it, it, she just is out of place too because she is she's basically telling the littlest angel what he's already learning within the plot of the movie. Like, she's just sort of spelling it out for him, which he later spells out himself anyway. So it does feel like she's just like this, like, shoehorned in character. I'm going to tell everyone a soft pass. Yeah, I mean, if you're just, if you're into something fucking weird like this, like, if you want to see the creepy priest just like a misguided attempt at trying to tell like an easter lesson and some crazy reaganite parents maybe check it out like just for the weird factor of it it's a pretty watchable 26 minutes i wasn't really bored i just was like i don't like this so for a warped curiosity i can guess i can kind of recommend it but for like just a regular general viewership you know me i'm a hard pass on all these religious (laughs) except for sing stretch and play which might be the greatest tape i've ever seen (laughs) still the greatest song ever (laughs) who's the king of the jungle (laughs) i won't do that to you people anymore all right let's move on to JJ the jet plane. The sun is rising high up over Terry Town. Friends taking off and friends touching down. And that's where you'll find that one of a kind. JJ. JJ the jet plane. That's me. Matt, why don't you take away and describe the box art and read the synopsis? Yeah, so when we do these short ones, we like to do more than one movie, you know, to cover the time. So we watched a second tape this time, as well as The Little Angels Easter. And we watched Focus on Family Presents, J.J. the Jet Plane, Never Give Up, which is special stories for Christian families, ages two to six. We're right in that range. (laughs) Yeah, we're perfectly in there. J.J. the Jet Plane, Never Give Up has a cover that doesn't feature J.J. the Jet Plane. It features the girl plane from the Shooting Star story, which is Tracy. So Tracy is on the cover of J.J. the Jet Plane, already off to a rockin' start. (laughs) It's also called Never Give Up. There's only one story, Tracy's story, that is a Never Give Up story. The other two stories on this tape are not Never Give Up stories. None of them are called Never Give Up. And none of the three are called Never Give Up. Tracy's story is, that's like sort of the theme But the other themes for the other two episodes aren't that, which is just fucking hilarious to me. And basically the picture is of Tracy the plane with a shooting star because that's what she's never wanting to give up catching with a shooting star. And I should point out that these planes that are CG animated in the air, but they have like CG animated human faces with flesh tones, but all the planes are different colors. So there's like 
a flesh tone face popped on the front of these jet planes. Creepy. Fucking terrifying. <laughs> Straight up terrifying. If you look at the uh, side of the box here, you get another soulless, dead eyed looking Tracy plane staring into your soul. Yeah, it says never give up. It says focus on family, which I'm assuming is one of the production companies. And Tommy Nelson, who is who released this. And his name is all, all over, over this. It. Yes. 35 minutes, which is a flagrant lie because this tape is over 45 minutes long. And I know because I couldn't stop looking at the counter. <laughs> I know. When it reached 32 and then we started a whole new story, story I was like, oh, We're you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> so when you flip over to the back, it's, it once again says JJ the Jet Plane. And it says stories on this video. They say the three stories, and Steve pointed out to me when we finished, they're out of order. <laughs> so they tell you the three stories that are on this, but is not in the correct order that they play on this tape. The first one listed, and the first one that actually does play, is JJ's Butterfly Adventure. This is the only story that focuses on JJ. For a show and a tape that is called JJ the Jet Plane, he is only the focus of one of these 10-minute stories. <laughs> which is just insane to me. It would be like buying a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and then the first one's about them and the other two's about April O'Neil and Shredder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then the right, third one, like, right. If that was like... Turtles how... aren't important. Yeah, it's very insane. So this is a description of JJ's only episode, JJ's Butterfly Adventure. As winter gets closer and closer, JJ, TM, <laughs> they trademark that shit <laughs> finds it very hard to keep on believing in god's plan for his new little friend breezy tm they tm'd breezy the butterfly for fuck's sakes <laughs> should he make a plan for breezy's safety on his own or should he keep on trusting that god has already have a good plan for him sounds like matthew 6 a it doesn't put what that is no so you're supposed to just know what that passage is or you got to find it in your bible and like mark it be like oh that's like the jj or i'm sure this is marketing to a community that probably knows what that is like offhand (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) yeah so that's episode one Episode two, Tracy's shooting star, is not the second episode. It's actually the third episode. They're just wrong. Savannah sure does make a shooting star sound awesome, but try as she may, Tracy continues to let down her attention or let her attention be diverted and misses her chance to see one. Join the gang from Terrytown Airport as they cheer her on to keep trying. Feels like Romans eight twenty five. Damn it, not all of us know these. I love that they put this here just to really smack it in your fucking face. This is about Jesus. I want to point out also, I didn't say it this time. All of these names are TM'd. Savannah, Tracy, and Terrytown Airport all have trademarks on them. As if someone was going to steal it, even though they have a full show wrapped around it already copyrighted? Yeah, it's insane. The third episode listed is Snuffy's Thanksgiving, which also has a TM. Everyone gets a little tense when it looks like their buddy Big Jake, TM, will miss Thanksgiving. And worse, (laughs) he may get lost in the fog. But they learn that God, TM, no, I'm just kidding, (laughs) that God's (laughs) blessing will surround us all when we trust in him, pray, and be thankful, no matter what happens. Looks like Psalm 125.1. Cool. Visit us on the web at TommyNelson.com. Visit Terrytown Airport at pbskids.org slash JJ. This was on PBS? Apparently. I wonder if they did the VeggieTales thing and cut out the Jesus shit when they put it on PBS. I bet they did. I bet they did. And then these fucking tapes have all the Christ shit added back in. Hmm. Tommy Nelson... Porchlight Entertainment, Modern Cartoons, Focus on Family, and WonderWings.com are all the presenters of this, and it's from 2002. This is like a bookstore-type label on it, probably because it was sold in Christian bookstores. Twelve ninety-seven. dollars What's the cost of this? I just realized all the graphical background is just like clouds that are repeated over and over. <laughs> yes. It's like a wallpaper of clouds. I guess the only thing I forgot to mention was that next to each picture, or next to each description is a picture of just like a terrifying jet plane with a human face. Yeah, the creepiest thing. But let's move on to what I actually enjoyed maybe the most in this tape is the trailers before. These trailers before scared me to my core. (laughs) (laughs) The first one is Uncle Henry's Wild and Wacky World. Uh. Oh, 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 it's 
this morning already? Oh, perfect! How come everything's such a fancy schmancy production with you? We got some great ideas up here. Oh, uh, who is it? I propose a game I call Practical Practices for Powerful Personal Prayer. Oh, goody. <laughs> the book of Proverbs in the Bible has all kinds of good stuff in it. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> trust in the Lord with all your heart. Which is pretty much Christy Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, it is. No, it's literally exactly Pee Wee's Playhouse, right down to like the mailman character coming in. Literally Pee Wee's Playhouse, but with like a lot of God in it. Everything is a message about God. Everything. I could, I could believe how much about. I mean, he just is like, oh, God's going to find a way. Trust in God. Oh, if you don't know it, don't worry. God does. Like over and over. He's playing it so wacky and big, like Pee Wee, though, as well. And the trailer's like probably like three minutes long. This frightened me to my core. Like, <laughs> and at the end of it, it has like it has testimonials yes. from kids and parents yes. about how awesome this is. I don't think, man, when is the last time I've ever seen a trailer like that? It advertises that there's three tapes available now and three more tapes coming out in August. And like, yeah, has these testimonials of the kids being like, oh, it helped me learn. I can't learn in school, but this helped me learn. <laughs> and then like the parents being like, I love this. And all the while, like animated shit playing in the background from the episodes. It's complete, completely bananas. I would assume like a trailer like that, when do you think that show was made? Because it looked like early 90s. Yeah, this is this is from 2002, at least this tape was released. I don't know when these episodes aired. Yeah, this looked like a 90s show. Mm -hmm. Like a straight-up 90s show. And I just wonder if like the budgets hadn't caught up to like Christian TV yet, so it looked like a 90s show, even though it was 2000s. It straight-up didn't look like it was from that era. I would watch Uncle Henry's Wild and Wacky World. I, I kind of just fascinated by how crazy it was. Yeah, I mean, the warped curiosity could get me to probably watch it, but it did scare me. Second trailer was Mary Lou's Flip Flop Shop. This one was just a wacky Dr. Seuss world. This is the one that, like, freaked me out. It was weird. Yeah, it was super weird. And this is, this Mary Lou of this is, like, the Olympic gymnast Mary Lou Redder. Is that her name? Redder? I think something like uh, that, yeah. This is, so she is, like, a person that we know. Like, <laughs> and she is, like, literally flipping around this, like, Dr. Seuss-like stage with these, like, Muppet-like creatures all around her. It's less about God, I think, all as right. it is morals. Like, it's mm -hmm. a morals thing, but they still sell it at, like, Christian bookstores. I was scared for those kids. Like, to be in the room with all those giant puppets and her fucking flipping around everywhere. Like, it was weird. Yeah, this was an odd one. Definitely, when you see the giant, like, human size Muppets. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, something was wrong with that. But it definitely was a lot less Christy, like you said. It was mostly just morals. I, I'm sure, yeah, they marketed it as, like, a Christian thing by saying, you know, sell, buy, it, buy it at your Christian bookstores or whatever. It didn't seem heavy on, like, the songs about God and stuff like that. Like, Henry's thing was so about God. This was a little less. This one pumped the brakes a little bit. So our last one was, it was advertising something that was unfinished. And yeah. it was a 3D animation about caterpillars, and it had Don Knotts as one of the voice actors yeah tim conaway from the carol Burnett show and don knotts being suckered into doing this like i feel bad for both of them having to be in this shit very odd choice to just put like something unfinished as an advertisement like, yeah. i've never seen that done before they were showing the con uh, concept sketches and what possibly the caterpillars would look like but I think the weirdest part was, I don't think they had an official title for it. They were like, this is going to be stories about Mambi or something like that, the Caterpillar. But yeah. they didn't have a title for what the show or video was going to be. Yeah. Very strange. And then, like, really at the end, they sort of, like, again, shoehorned in, oh, and it's about God, too. Like they <laughs> don't forget. Yeah, it's like here's a, an Adventures of Caterpillar learning about this, and it's got Don Knotts and Tim Conway in it. You like them? This is what it's going to look like. Or at least your parents do. Yeah, yeah, right. You don't even know who those are. We don't even know who those are. <laughs> you know, you know, like we. Kinda... I know who they are, but not. Yeah, yeah exactly. You I didn't grow I mean? up with them. And check out the state of the art animation that we're gonna have in the movie. Oh, and by the way, God's in it. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it even came out. 
I hope it didn't. <laughs> so we just checked for you. It's called Hermie, a common caterpillar, and it actually did come out. And you can buy it for 19 cents on Amazon. Yep, it exists. It's real. <laughs> they made it to DVD. Who knew? <laughs> that market for Christian entertainment is just booming. So we'll go into, and we'll cover these quick, because I, I don't think any... Yeah. garbage. <laughs> so the first one was called JJ's Butterfly Adventure. Yeah. JJ finds a butterfly... Then we find out he's got to get ready for winter. They've got to winterize him, and he gets very concerned about where the butterfly is going to go for the winter. So he goes around and finds spots for him to stay. He checks out some lightning bugs. He checks out some bees. Just some, like, spots in town, like a donut yeah. shop and things like that. The way the bees were animated frightened me. I didn't like the way they looked and how they shook. It freaked me out. It made me uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I could see that. <laughs> now, the one part in this that made me uncomfortable was when they first introduce the like old plane that's going to give the old timey wise plane that's going to give JJ here some some knowledge. It's going to you know smack mm. smack some knowledge in his head, and his whole knowledge is God's got a plan; he'll figure it out. Yeah, like the butterfly is going to figure it out. God has a plan. Don't worry about it. It's not on you. <laughs> That's basically like what he says. And then he comes back concerned. He's like, yeah, I'll follow you. Well, let's go follow the uh, the butterfly here. And it turns out it's a monarch butterfly. So it goes up into, I don't know, do they fly north or something? They go to some spot. Anyway, they all fly to the same spot. Hang out on the trees. You've seen this on National Geographic and stuff where it's like beautiful. There's just like millions of monarch butterflies hanging out. So they find that spot. They do a decent job selling it with all the monarchs hanging out in the trees. I think this is kind of where the best story ends. They put it first because I felt like I was mostly into this one. I'm like, okay, I get it. God has a plan was getting annoying. They couldn't, you know, just scientifically explain this. Yeah, because really the God has a plan is the only, it's said over and over again, but there's no other Christy thing in here. It's just that, and they just keep saying it. They're like, oh, he made it. Glad for God's plan. We should mention, too, the setup for each episode where they give you the plot breakdown. Every episode then starts with a song after they sort of set up the plot. Mm -hmm. So we get a song about the butterfly, his friend the butterfly. My uh, butterfly breezy. Yeah, TM. Do, 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 do. <laughs> TM. <laughs> Damn. We just thought it would be funny if Breezy got stuck in his jet engine and just <laughs> fucking blew out the back, eviscerated. <laughs> thought that would have been great. A butterfly was being a little crazy there, just hanging out right by that jet engine. I was like, what are you doing, butterfly? <laughs> yeah, you got a death wish. Call back to the <laughs> other episodes we talked about. <laughs> Our second little episode here was called Snuffy's Thanksgiving, and this one is just the lamest one, in my opinion. It's about a cargo plane getting caught somewhere in Alaska, and then he has to fly back through a winter storm. They're desperately trying to tie this back to what Thanksgiving means. They never, never answer do. it. <laughs> and it just turns out Snuffy makes it back after they're all concerned, and they have Thanksgiving. And they're like, it's about thanks and giving. That's it? That's all we got? I just kept I just kept shouting at the screen. It's about the slaughter of the Native Americans. <laughs> <laughs> this is when I started to like, oh, man. I might fall asleep, because when we get to the third one, Tracy Shooting Star, oh, I was tired. Oh, yeah. This one is so boring. I, like, got up to go to the bathroom at one point, and I said, please don't pause it. Like, I'll be back. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, yeah, she, she sings about a shooting star. She wants to see a shooting star. And, like, this is the message, I guess, of the tape. Never give up. She believes that she is going to see a shooting star, and she does, because God's plan has it so that she could see God's shooting star, which they keep saying, too, which freaked me out. <laughs> they couldn't say the biggest shooting star, the best. It was God's shooting Every star. Every time it was God's shooting star, and I was just like, oh, God, give me a gun to shoot myself in the face. <laughs> I think at one time, too, it was God picked her, Tracy, to find the meteorite that lands, right. and then she gets to put it in the museum, I think named after her or something right. like that. Yeah, there you go. That's a story <laughs> to it. Uh, it was not much. I can tell you one thing. When we looked down and saw that the tape was at 45 minutes, that was irritating. Because what we should tell you a little behind the scenes of this 
is we watched Leprechaun Origins, then back to back to back, we watched Littlest Angels Easter, and then JJ the Jet Plane. It was a little a little rough to make it through these. I want to die. <laughs> like <laughs> it was so painful to make it through. We did it somehow. We did this for you, the five people that are going to download this Christy episode. We did this for you. <laughs> I mean, other than that, there's not much to talk about. We, we got through these. There's hardly any behind the scenes. I am very interested in what else Tommy Nelson did because it's just such a wacky set of trailers. Yeah, th- I mean, his brand of... These sort of insane Christian tapes is pretty funny. The Henry's Wacky Wild, Pee Wee's Playhouse World, the Mary Lou Redder show, and then this with the the jet plane. I, I can't stress enough if you've never seen this before. They are jet planes with human skin and human faces in the front. It And they move and they talk and they blink and it's this late 90s CGI and it's fucking nightmarish. Quite a bag of tricks that this tommy nelson company has of just insanity well and then the very end it says visit us at porchlight.com yeah, i've which, never heard of porchlight.com i mean porchlight have you it's probably it's probably a christian company i would assume so porchlight.com does still exist still doing christy films and we found out uh, we know where the blade runner actress yes. went Sean Young is in one of these uh, Porchlight Entertainment movies that's listed on, like, the front of their website. So that's where she's at now. Sadness. Yeah, just, oh, bummer. Pay those bills. I gotta pay those bills. So Porchlight still exists. JJ was not on their front page, but I'm sure it's somewhere to be found on there. I want to point out something else, too, about the behind the scenes that I just thought was kind of funny. I looked up the Littlest Angels Easter on IMDb just to see what they had on there. It's so funny. It's like someone stripped the IMDb. There's only one crew credit, and it's one of the two directors. There's only one cast credit, and it's Naomi Judd. Nothing else. No description, no pictures, no locations, no budget, no nothing. It's like someone ripped the page apart. It has title, one of the directors, and like one of the actors that briefly appears in the movie. That is it. Yeah, it looks like all this was distributed out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Interesting. Yeah. So let's let's go down there, uh, and then let's let's start asking some questions, knocking on some doors, <laughs> asking about JJ the jet plane. Well, I think the big difference is, Veggie Tales kind of had the good bad vibe going on. The veggies would just sit there, blink and stare at the the screen for a couple seconds, and I would laugh at it because I was like, oh wow. This animation is actually good enough and fluid enough where you're like, okay, that's fine, that passes. The stories are like, eh. There's nothing in it other than the extremely creepy faces where it makes me laugh. So I kind of will never talk about it again. This one goes hard on the Jesus. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not funny. It's sort of just like, oh, here it comes. You know, like, oh, God's plan. Everything for them is God's plan. It's almost like lazy writing. It's just like, oh, it's God's plan. It's fine. It's fine. It's God's plan. (laughs) Probably what a priest would do in a small town. He doesn't have, he's just like, I don't really have an answer to this. Um, It's God's plan. God's plan. Mysterious ways. God's plan. I got got a dog in my basement. It's no big deal. (laughs) Let's move on to God's plan of what's going in the museum. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you. All right, let's uh, move on to our museum here. Every week we like to put in our museum of tapes things that we love, the gold that we find in our plastic here, or things that are lumps of coal that we just need to learn from. What are you putting in the museum this week? I've got a piece of coal and a, a piece of good you could say a gold. In The Littlest Angels, I'm going to say a lump of coal. If you're going to have four main characters, oh, I'm not even going to include the dog. So we'll include the little angel, the 90s kid, the mom and the dad. Someone's got to be likable where you can attach to. I just don't think they do it. I don't think anyone's likable in it. At the end of the tape, I was like, oh, at least the dog didn't die. That cannot be the positive vibe coming <laughs> off someone. Like, that was my only thing. And if you're going to be mean to a dog for like 22 minutes of your 25-minute tape, fuck off. I'm not going to watch. Don't treat a dog like this. Yeah. Mine is somehow both a lump of coal and a lump of gold, like a little bit. 
the priest. I have to. Somehow, even animated, they still managed to make the priest creepy. <laughs> like, this character would be the creepy priest character in a live-action thing. This is animated, and somehow they found a way for him to be fucking terrifying. He's keeping this dog in his basement. Like, I can't talk about this enough. He literally has the dog locked in there. Why is everyone okay with this? <laughs> So I don't know if this is a lump of coal or a lump of gold, but it's just like something that like I need to keep talking about. <laughs> How do you lock a dog in a basement and then everyone's just like, oh, is that, where is that? You know, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there had to be someone who was like doing the animations, looking over the storyboards and like, Oh, so are we going to put in a scene where, you know, like the dog sneaks in because there's, there's food there and then he shuts the door. They're like, nah, nah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I do have a piece of gold for JJ's. And I think the very end on the last one, JJ's Butterfly Adventure, like where they show all the monarch butterflies and everything, I actually was impressed. I didn't think they would have that capability to make something look really aesthetically that pleasing. <laughs> it surprised me. So you get a piece of gold in there for surprising me because the rest of it's just like, meh. Uh, I've just got to put it. I guess it's a more general thing, but uh, it's a lump of coal. And it is just a general lump of coal of the writing. Like you've got this animated cartoon and this is the laziest and most boring way to handle this type of show it's it's all the writing like the animation obviously isn't great because it's low budget but yeah there's moments like the butterflies that you're talking about there's a human character that interacts with the cg world or whatever that's fine but the writing is just so lazy and so boring it this 45 minutes felt like days honestly getting it getting through it so if you're gonna make a tape like this to try to sell the kids and to try to peddle your religion on them. Write it better. Do better. <laughs> yeah, it's a rough one. No one's going to watch these and <laughs> we'll probably have small downloads. But I will end on one other thing. I thought it was hilarious that the price of this tape on the back is twelve ninety seven. Yes. Weird. Very weird. Very weirdly specific. We paid a quarter for it. So. <laughs> and you get to keep it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, I'll sell it to anyone for 50 cents. 50 cents, come on. <laughs> Better check the values of these because our last Jesus tapes actually had good value. Yeah, if this is worth something, sell it. Make our money back. <laughs> <laughs> so we can buy something better. So we can buy some more Jesus tapes. <laughs> well, I guess that ends it for this week. Uh, you can rate and review us on iTunes and check us out on Podbean and YouTube. And next week, I believe we are doing a theater movie. And that theater movie is... Ready Player One. Ready Player One. But okay. I believe we'll also put in Pacific Rim into that because I just want to see it. Yeah, so we'll kind of do a double episode of theater movies. They'll be out for some time by the time this airs, by the time those air. So you'll be able to see them both before you hear us talking about them. This, yeah, this concludes our month of March, our seeing double month, and begins video game month of April. Very excited about that, and I think I think starting it off with those two movies is going to be really fun. Even though they're not directly based on video games, it's so tied in that, like, we have to. It seems like they just work. Yeah, <laughs> it makes the most sense. So come back next week. We're going to be talking about those two films. Rate, review, like us, talk about us, share us, listen to us, and just give us all those clicks. <laughs> That's right. We love those clicks. So remember to be kind. Rewind. You're a fun pal to fly with too, Breezy. Let's go. Who is always up before the sun? First in line to have some fun Who will always lend a wing to help someone My little bitty butterfly breezy Who's as rugged as a weather vane Facing wind and pouring rain Who can fly as fast as any plane My little bitty butterfly breezy As we fly through the skies without a care There's a special sweetness to the air That only comes in the rarest company Breezy and me, let's go! Follow me! Come on! That's it! Now some may think we're the oddest pair Let them laugh, we don't care I could never find another friend As rare as my little bitty butterfly
fly breezy. My little bitty 